I just want to give you a bit of an insight into the AFL Enjoys team. We're a bunch of unique individuals, Matza, Svenda, and Dean. We're going to engage with our minds and our hearts. We're going to exchange ideas, thoughts, and even our energy. And to speak from your heart, you need to have courage. You need to be honest and authentic. We're not always going to get it right, and sometimes you're not going to agree with us. But that's okay, because just like you, we care. Just like you, we're passionate about the game. So if you want to come along for the ride, join us at the AFL Enjoys podcast, because we really enjoy the footy. Hello and welcome back to the AFL Enjoys podcast. My name is Dean, back on the pod today after impressing in the twos. Joined once again by the boys, George Svender and James Matz, our fellow enjoyers of the AFL. How's Ooh, it going, boys? Mate, very well. Well, well done, mate, to get that in with, with only one... Uh, one take. Yeah, one take. <laughs> that's it, man. That's it. Very, Full stop right at the end. That's it. That's it, man. We're very uh, very proud to see, you know, you did your thing last week. You know, you, you impressed us. Um, the scouts were very happy and we thought we'd uh, invite you back oh. to host. Thanks, boys. Appreciate it. How was Chewy Jew, by the way? Yeah, good. So I was in the Queensland, caught a caught a game with Stewie Jew in the box there at the Gold Coast <laughs> Suns match. Um, you must have been right at the back, mate, because I couldn't see you on the broadcast. Funny thing is, yeah. So pre-game, I'm in the rooms, yeah, and I'm talking to the boys, getting around them. I said to Maddie Rao, Maddie, you've got to get back to your roots, get back on the ground. They be one with the ground. Next thing I know, he's out there eating grass, mate. Wow, is now, you look, did that? <laughs> that was you, <laughs> man. It's, wow. it seems like I might have had an influence. Wow, nah, that's um, he performed pretty well. So, he did, he did. You know, um, yeah. But no, nah, look, that didn't happen. But what did happen was I did see the Bulldogs at the airport, which was pretty cool. Oh, wow. Um, what do I have to What's, say about What does it? Bont look like in person? The Bont is quite tall, um, quite slender, but also very well built. So he's got a good mixture of just interesting physique. That's exactly um, what I was expecting to hear. But yeah, Fair enough. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> Bailey, makes sense. Bailey Smith's mullet just looks as miraculous as you would expect. So he doesn't like detach it but we thought it when was he's a not wig. playing is it a wig? It's, it's real it's not a wig actually yeah i pulled on it it didn't come off so. <laughs> he went <laughs> <laughs> um it's funny though actually seeing these guys in real life like up close and personal not mm. on the footy field out of context a little bit they sort of their body language is just like it is on the field like bevo angry <laughs> ba- bailey dale seems like a good bloke <laughs> bailey smith you can tell he just he's a fan of He's like celebrity a little bit, you know. He's, he's strutting around was there. He, was he getting attention? Baz? A little, he's getting more looks yeah. than the others. Yeah. Any like autographs or anything like nah, that? Nah, not when I was there, but they just walked past. Um, anyway, it was good fun, but I'm glad to be back nah, talking a bit of footy. Good um, to have you back, Dino. Thanks, boys. Well, look, we'll get into round one. I'll tell you what. I must admit, last week when I was away, I didn't get to watch much footy. I was working, but uh, thank you, boys, for taking care of the pod, and you did a great job. Got me filled in on what happened. So that's what we do here, baby. Yeah, you, you did well, boys. And then we come into this week, Friday night. I was excited, back watching the footy again. And the Tigers, who we wrote off, I did. Definitely. Well, I, you, you wrote off. You, you agreed. I, humbled. <laughs> I got humbled again. <laughs> got humbled. My second NAW, no, getting um, torn to shreds by uh, Richmond. That, that hurt. That really hurt. But hey, you know what? Good on them, man. All their best players are they're getting into form. Dusty's doing well. Short's doing well. Rioli, um, even what's what was the other guy's name? Uh, Shai Bolton. Shai Bolton. He's killing it as well. So they're uh, they're back in frame for maybe finals. Yeah, they look back to their best. I mean, if you, even if you don't look at the stats or anything like that, just the eye test that played more like the Richmond that we know. Mm. You know, there's that kind of ballistic ball movement, like toe poking. You're just getting it forward at all cost, and then it just starts to bounce for them you know, really attacking football. And, you know, as you said, some of the senior players back to playing good footy, like Cochin playing forward line, looks like a natural forward. Mm. Who would have thought that Three goals, I think he kicked, yeah. Yeah, him kicking three, Dusty four. He did, for sure. And I think their accuracy early in the game as well, I think they kicked, what was it, seven goals before they kicked it behind. Meanwhile, Geelong Mm. uh, was very inaccurate. So that scoreboard pressure really got involved in the game early. And the Cats... Sort of were hanging around, they were always within about three goals and just couldn't hit that next step and, and take yeah. the lead. They, they do have a lot of injuries, Geelong, at the moment. I mean, you don't want to make that an excuse because they're a professional yeah. team. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I think it was more of a story of Richmond just kind of getting back to their best. So if they can keep up that form, obviously they got momentum from beating West Coast week before, then you're right, it's, it's still open for them. I think it'll be tough. I don't see them as like a premiership threat or anything like that. But good to see Richmond kind of playing the style that we, we've come to love them i think part of that is their uh their pressure was on like they were tackling and uh there was a moment in the fourth i believe where there was an entry into the geelong 50 where 
Hawkins. It was a one-on-one with Hawkins and Bolter. Hawkins hand passes it whilst getting tackled. The next guy got tackled and then he hand passed it. The next guy got tackled. So it was just like the Tigers just, you know, I think BT said ferociously tackling. And it was. Like they were they were like scrambling for tackles. Mm. So yeah. yeah. They hunted in packs in that moment, didn't they? They did. They Very did. impressive to see. The tigers hunting in packs. I see, I see, yeah. I see what you did there, Dana. <laughs> I see you. Hey, man. When it's there, you got to take it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did want to shout out, actually, some flowers. First of the pod this week. Here we go. Ooh. Nice and early flowers. Uh, shouldn't be a surprise. Friend of the pod, Dion Prestia. Hey, some flowers. Little, 200 little, games. Little well done. Well done, Dion. We, we forgot to mention him as a possible Mario or Luigi. <laughs> little, yeah, little Italian. I'm assuming Presti is Italian. Come little, on. Maybe a little Must toad. Be. Has to be. Yeah. A little, little toad. toad. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Well, what's oh. a, is there any meatballs in Nintendo? Uh, pro- probably. <laughs> I don't know. Are human, human meatballs? <laughs> human meat. Pro- probs, man. Probs. Oh, <laughs> um, I did notice one thing in this game, though, just getting back to the footy. Dustin Martin, great player, obviously. Of course. Even he now is getting in on this snaps from directly in front business. Like he was 40 out. Impressive it, snaps. Did he not you. used to do that? Not from set shots. What's that? Did he always Did, used to do Yeah, that? I thought he was I more of a snap guy. Uh, no. I, I can't nah. picture Dustin Martin lining up in front of goal and just not kicking a drop. Not from, from set shots. Nah, not from that far, man. Not I think it's a new far. thing. Tigers yeah, fans, no. let us know. But no, no, it, was, it was Harry Mackay. It was all his fault. He started doing it from oh, life. We'll talk from about his, Harry. We'll talk yeah, about we'll, we'll get, we'll get to him. It's brewing. George is ready to explode. From common medalist to potato. It's a teaser to later discussion. But... um. Yeah, I don't have too much more to say about this game other than the Tigers are now six points out of the eight. So to your point, Matt, uh, it's not over for them, I guess. Like no. it seemed it was a few weeks ago. Good on them. Still early days, man. Still early another days. 13 or so games to go. So yeah, Plenty 12 football. games to go, something like that. And Nank's back this week, I think. So Yeah, good pick up. What yeah. about Tom Lynch? When does he come back? Oh, I think he's like later in the season. Like he's like another m- month or two away. Like yeah, mm. that's uh, you can't be really relying on Tom Lynch yeah. at this point. So... Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Um, then we move to the next game. Why did they schedule two Friday night games? I was shocked I, to see this game. I forgot tr- it was they're Friday trying night. to disguise. I think this game. You know what? Fair play. Maybe, yeah. maybe they're gonna. Oh, we'll just tuck that under the rug. Everyone will watch Richmond. True, it has true. to be. Yeah. Well, I actually forgot completely that this game was on. So I'm checking the Supercoach scores. I'm like, why is the other game live? <laughs> anyway, the Eagles got whacked by the Suns. The Suns' biggest ever away win. So. Well played to them, I guess. But man, the Eagles are just a basket yeah. case, aren't they? Yeah. Any team that's going to worst versus the week, uh, the Weekles, the West Coast Weekles, the Weekles, <laughs> out of mind, is uh, is just going to have record breaking performances. Yeah. Players are going to just you know become superstars overnight for one week. They're just they they're shocking. Mm. But uh, another couple of injuries as well. Jermaine Jones, who's my boy, I've talked about him every week. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's out. There's You've someone else that also got injured as well. They just they can't they can't handle it. Mm. They're not even going to fill the twenty two. Yeah, you have no. to go back to Aaron Black. Aaron Black. Hey, <laughs> that'd be it. Actually, it was it the Aaron. There wasn't even the Aaron Black. It wasn't even the one that used to play for North. It was some other Aaron Black. Oh, the worst Aaron Black. The worst Aaron Black, man. Let's get, <laughs> give us the old North Melbourne Aaron Black. But um, no, I got to say, at least with this game, we got to give you know shout out to Gold Coast. We finally got a Matt Rowell game. We haven't had a Matt yes. Rowell game like this in well, probably since his first month of playing footy. It's probably one of his best games of his career. It is. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm going to say it is the best game of his career. 16, what was it? No, 18 kicks from a very handball happy type dude. Mm. He had 17 tackles. Yeah, seventeen tackles, unbelievable, um, um, unbelievable, Liz. It's it was huge, man. And what's what else did he do? It was um six hundred meters gained. Yeah, more uncontested like, possession as well. Mm, that goal straight f- was it from the um uh, from the rut contest where he burst that out of the pack and you know snapped it. That's we haven't seen that from Matt Rowell. You know, That's he true. looked he looked dominant. All with like some green stuff in his teeth as well. I, I, know, I know, yeah, <laughs> can't get it um, out. <laughs> yeah, that that was odd, man. I got. I, I, I don't know, man. He's he gives us moments. That guy, like it was the grass. Remember the notebook, the notebook, the yeah, notebook. Yeah. You know that that was you know maybe he was smiling. In I the like notebook. the notebook, man. That that one was great. Maybe he was just like, man, the nice, the grass is really nice. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice. You know, yeah. today. I reckon that's what he was doing when he was uh, um, had the notebook out. So what, whatever works though. And similar yeah. with Noah Anderson, a few weeks ago, I said, can this guy step up and really be the leader of the midfield now that Tuke Miller's out? Well, these two guys here, they're twenty-two years old. The world's ahead of them in football, and they're both really good already. So mm. they do yeah. like they they have they do have the bones. Gold Coast to play good footy. I mean, Ben King is back. He's playing good. Kicked a couple of goals as well. Ballard, who I, the whole Ballard situation is weird. He had uh, 
equal record most intercept marks in a game. Ten. Whoa. So no one, no one has ever had more than ten intercept marks in a game, and he had it against West Coast because they can't kick. But this guy mm. got knocked out last week, and you got the whole Van Ruin kind of uh, ban for two weeks. It got overturned at the end. I mean, he's obviously not that injured if he's coming back and done a re- record-breaking so, game. So obviously he didn't get concussed. No, it must um, have been. Yeah, well, it could have been. It could just be a shorter term. Yeah. Um, I'm not you know, sure. Impact yeah. on him, maybe not a full it's, week. It's yeah, a but they thing. they give like an it was like a seven day, oh no, ten or twelve day mm. period. I'm pretty sure. I was surprised to the, see him out there. I had to. I didn't realize that Van Ruin got off as well. Maybe so, that's why they put the two games at the same time. So you know, they, they <laughs> we wouldn't realize that Ballard is actually playing when he can't. They probably didn't think oh. we'd analyze these games in so detailedly. To I'm, be honest, I'll, so. I'll, t- I'll tell you what though. You mentioned yeah. Rao and his tackles. <laughs> Do you know how many tackles our boy Jimby got? Uh, 12. No. 14? No. 16 tackles to Jimby. He was leading the tackles in the last quarter. Then, you know, Rao said, no, I'm not having that. Hey. What about Jimby, man? Shout out to Jimby, man. (laughs) Flowers to Jimby, man. No, but honestly, like, for for a first-year player to be stepping up and putting that much pressure in a team that where no one's performing other than Tim Kelly, that's pretty impressive, man. He's really the only top 10 bona fide young star that they've got really Oscar Allen as well mm. being a key he's still, forward he's still playing right yeah. Jermaine Jones but he got injured yeah there's not many though he's one of the yeah. few shining lights of that team at the moment mm. um, uh, and Belly Humph- Humphrey for uh, Gold Coast mm. also had a good game good player that one mm. top yeah. five pick last six, year six, 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 six yeah, yeah. Mm. Should, he could have been top five easy yeah um, cool boys well I'll tell you what the next game surprised me I don't know about you guys but Frio shocking the Swans in Sydney now, this is a Frio team mm. that hasn't been in good form this year and a Sydney team that was desperate for a win. Mm. And they start well, three goals to one first quarter. You're thinking, okay, should be a routine win. But Frio just pumped him in the second quarter and never looked back. They got their swagger mm. back, Frio, last couple of weeks. Mm. I think a big part of that is that the big, ben, the big men, the two rocks, mm. they had a dominant display. Yeah, and Darcy was a monster. Yeah, Darcy was a monster. Who did he come up against? Against Laddams and... Or was it, no, who's against Hickey, who Hickey, hasn't Hickey. played in months, Ages. right? So, uh, she would have been his first game of the season. So, a mm. bit of that. Also, Luke Jackson was coming up against an undermanned defense again for um, uh, Sydney. Um, he looked really good, um, Luke Jackson. You know, he was at three goals and a direct goal assist as well. Um, there was a. Did you guys see the goal where it was like he took the mark around the fifty and then he just he ran around? Um, Nick Blakey and got the snap. Man looks good, man. Like he's um, yeah, he's got a bit of confidence yeah. now. Big time, big time, and it's it's good to see because you know we want to see the young young players of the competition. You know, highly touted players. We want to see them do well. So well, we criticize. Yeah. We've all criticized Frio for their kind of really kick heavy in the in the back fifty, switching it and not really doing anything. But mm. they're starting to get a bit of that mojo back in the midfield. Brayshaw was kind of... Apparently, he was injured first first couple of weeks of the year. They had that article yeah. in AFL. He looks a bit better now. And, you know, they're getting the ball moving to the 50 a bit quicker. Their tolls suddenly look a bit better because the movement's better. And that's 61 to 44 inside 50s against Sydney. So naturally, Ooh. you know, you're going to score more if you're putting that forward pressure on. And there you go. Two weeks in a row of 100 plus points yeah. shows that they're starting mm. to score. Mm. 100%. On the Sydney point of view, though, they're 14th on three wins. They, they've lost their three games at home this year. They're one win ahead of North. <laughs> Think about that. That's mental. One that's win. crazy. That's yeah. mental. Uh, How that's... are these... These guys got belted in the grand final and it can happen where you just are shaken as a club, but wow. Um, yeah, they've had a shocking start. It's hard to see a way back for them. I know it's still early days. We're saying Richmond, two points ahead of them is still the chance, but you're looking at it, you're thinking... There's teams in that eight where it'd be hard to imagine them falling off enough for Sydney yeah, to Yeah, it's recover. very competitive. That's the thing. Very yeah, competitive. Yeah. It is a competitive year. Yeah, like, uh, yeah it's a tough year for them, man. Like, they might be a top five pick type team this year. Do they have their pick this year? Like, yeah, they, they, always have, they always have their pick. They should, yeah. yeah. You'd hope so because that's where they're heading. Like, you know. I mean, who are they missing? Mm. They're missing their talk. Like, they're missing McCartan, mm-hmm. Reed. Yeah. I think those two are the big ones because they can break packs. They're not... You know, they're the sort of rampy. Actually, no, it's, actually that's there are a couple one. missing. Mm. And Mills got injured at the start of the game as well, which doesn't that, that hurts. Yeah. He's, the, he's their, their leader. Still, mm. you're at home. Mm. Actually, you know who else yeah. got injured today and apparently he's going to miss a couple months? Who's that? Logan McDonald as oh, well. No. So that's another key position gone. And Buddy's so, not in good form. 
Yeah, I think he's he must be done. He's finished. Surely he's finished. Yeah. Um, what about Mc, uh, Amati? Is he injured as well? Yep. I think he's probably. So they do month. have a bit of a tolls crisis. They big time, big time. They're, who's the, the only tall they got playing is probably like Tom McCartan right now, and yep. Heaney's having to play big. Yeah, it's it's not good. It's not good for this for this ones. Golden um, though, Golden is he's a monster. Oh mate, like the the super coach positive of Golden. Oh. <laughs> but he was it's insane. Thirty nine possessions, two goals, eight clearances. That uh, <laughs> what the that is, that's that's insane, man. That's a dominant display. Mm. Yeah, that's that's what we saw in the preseason. Like oh, pick him. That's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, he's he's doing his thing the last couple of weeks, but it's not helping. Not helping the Swannies. <laughs> Too much, unfortunately. Fair mm. enough. I did just want to quickly just backtrack, uh, backtrack on the tips. So, Tigers, we got wrong. We all yeah. went along, I yeah. believe. Uh, we got the Suns beating Eagles. And then this mm. game, we would have gone Swans, didn't we? I'm pretty sure we did. Yeah. So, we're one and two. And then we... Oh, one, two. We got the next one uh, two right. And one, two and one, two and one. Two and one, sorry. Yeah, but two and one. The next one we got right as well, Port. Um. Yeah. Take it away, boys. Yeah. Look, that 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 was rough, man. That's just it's just more kicks in the guts of North Melbourne fans. LDU's having a really good, you know, positive performance, and then he gets injured. Everyone got injured, you know. Zerha and, broken jaw. Yeah, bro. Yeah, like see and the fractured jaw, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it's hard. It's hard to take that one. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Dean stopped watching at half time. I, I actually did stop watching at half time for the first time. In <laughs> did years. you check the scores at all? Or you just not nah, nah, um, every twenty minutes, like oh, okay. not even checking mm. every couple of minutes. Um, yeah, I've had enough, boys. Honestly, like <laughs> the whole Clarko, like give him time. I get it, hundred percent. It's not a Clarko thing, but the same people saying give Clarko time, mate. I've been watching the club my whole life. The last three years have been unwatchable. I can't have this again. It, it needs to be watchable. I, I'm not enjoying watching the games. I'm getting like one positive per game. Like it's just not enough. Like you can't have that. Yeah. No, nah, there needs to be something to look forward to on a week to week basis because yeah, it's just, it's not there. This week coming, hopefully Wardlaw plays and there's that. But then, you know what? That's going to fade after like, I don't know, a quarter and a half of footy when we've, you know, getting belted by the next team yeah. where we're reversing. So it's, there's yeah, there's so many. I wrote rough. down a few names. There's so many players on this team where they've played enough games now. Mm. I've I'm drawing a line through them. I think they're not AFL footballers. Maybe if they are, they're fighting for their life to be in the 22. Mm. But prove they're us wrong. Not. Prove us wrong. Prove us guys. wrong. But I'm telling you now, Aiden Core, these guys are hack, mate. Yeah. I've never been more happy to see one of my players get suspended for work. <laughs> like, yeah. It'll be a breath of fresh air to see him. What, in the what team. pick was he? Was he like a, a rando? No, no, he, he was recruited from GWS a few years ago. I don't know what pick he was back in those days, but yeah, we, no we picked him up. Oh, so it was core from GWS, not not Bonner. Both, 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 oh, both. They both, and they both. Suck. Anyway, core, he's rubbish, mate. If you're going to be <laughs> yeah. a tall defender, be tall or athletic or good at marking or good at defending. Like one of those has to be your skill. You, you suck, mm. mate. I'm sorry. <laughs> Phoenix Spicer. Mm. Right, this kid hasn't had enough of a chance, but he's. A small player, electric speed, but he's got no skill. He, the ball slips out of his hand every time he touches it. He runs without he collecting the ball and the ball's left behind. Get the ball and then run, mate. Mm. Uh, Bailey Scott, this guy here, mate, he's played about how many games, mate? 50, 60 games easily, yeah? Yeah, probably, yeah. Has he improved more, since day one? More. Since his first ever game, he hasn't played a better game than that. Pretty Remember much. that game? He had about three goals, couple, yeah. 20 odd touches. It was an exciting time when we like on his debut, but he's, now. He's not good enough. Yeah. Curtis Taylor, another one. This guy here has had the same physique for the last three years. <laughs> Hasn't improved. You'll have one good game every 20 and then carry that. He's not good enough. He got a good photo with Harry Styles though. He did. Yeah, good on him. <laughs> Flynn Perez and Jack yeah. Marnie. I'll block them together because they should both be in the VFL. What's mm. going on here? Why are these guys getting games? It can't be happening. Who, who else is going to take their spot? That's the thing, that's the That's the problem. That's yeah. the huge problem right <laughs> now. Blake Jury's come in, the young kid. At least he shows a bit of communication. You actually see him talking and mm. trying to be a leader as a young kid. Um, you know, we've got CCJ, kick nine in the VFL. Flowers for CCJ. Yeah, flowers for CCJ. That, that gives me some. But nine goals. Give us some. You kick nine. Nine, yeah. nine goals too. And about 20 odd touches. Anyway, he had a great mm. game. But, mm. boys, it just can't happen anymore. Yeah. The squad is not good enough. Clarko, at the end of the year, needs at least three to five free agent recruits and now two top whatever picks, two first round picks. I I can't see these players from like 15 to 22, the last seven or eight players on, on the 22 be playing anymore. They're trash. Um, and it's not going to get better until they do that. Yeah, no, nah, it's fair, fair call then. Well uh, summarized, I reckon. Um, um, yeah. In regards to Port, 
they had a decent game. They did their thing. Butters is Butters is their best player, I think. I love Butters, it's man. Like, yeah, Georgie's boy Butters is is their best player. Um, you know, Horn Francis would be a very happy boy. How'd that he, go? What was yeah. the what was the dynamic? Like? They booed him. Look, they booed him as but, they should. But what were the the players? I think well, the, I heard they were a bit. You know, they did the ignore him versus put pressure did on they, him. They 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 did. They well, don't, I did. Like the, it wasn't yeah. a Nick like Dacos tag type of thing. Actually, no. no, no. You know what? I will say that it wasn't. They didn't really fight him at yeah. any point. Here's there was happened. no RG. Yeah. Clarko's come out in the week, very professional, mm. no hard feelings, trying to just ease all the situation from being even a talking point. Fair enough. And then I see the North players not even giving him attention. I'm thinking, if you're going to do that, win the game or be competitive and prove that you can focus on the game and not the person. The only thing is, though, if they're focusing on Francis, the, 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 a Kane Corns type would come out and say, yeah, but you know, focus on actually winning instead of being 100%. tough on the player. So by you ignoring can't win. Him, yeah, exactly. So yeah, by no, ignoring right. him, I'm you're thinking, right. okay, compete. And then the first quarter, four goals apiece. I'm thinking, okay, ignore him all you want if you're going to play that well. Mm. And then what happens? We get smacked. Not even one instance of grabbing his shirt, you know, giving him a push. I wanted to see a bit of something, but... Mm. Um, I do have one more thing. I know I'm just going a bit wild here on the North. Hey, game, do you think, man? Do you think? Um, my papu, so for the non-Greeks, my granddad strikes again with another great quote, <laughs> North Melbourne wise. So um, I'm with him on Mother's Day, having a barbecue with the family, and standing around the barbecue, I turned to him. I said, "Papu, why is North so shit?" <laughs> and he goes, "They're chocolate boys." Mm. And I said, "They're what?" <laughs> He, go, he said, they're chocolate boys. I said, <laughs> so I laughed. I said, uh, what? what's chocolate boys What mean? does that mean? And then he said it in Greek. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Chocolate <laughs> boys. I said, what does that mean? What? What's chocolate boys? Yeah, I'm, I'm, concerned. Concerned. I'm concerned. The, the, Greek, the, the Greek part did not explain it, well, by the way. <laughs> and it's going to make sense in a second. Now. Yeah. They're brutal and they melt under pressure. That's oh. It. Man's got but, the analogy but, sorted. That's good. Wow. I like the chocolate boys of the AFL. I like that. I like that. You had me concerned for a sec. Not going to lie. <laughs> um, but no, I like that. I like that no, bubble. No, no. Soft, brittle, melt under pressure. That's that was his explanation. Apparently, did he thing, use the word brittle? Uh, no, he said he's soft. Like, they're brittle. <laughs> he said soft. He said soft and they melt. That's they soft and melt. I like it. I like um, it. So there you go. You heard it here first. Chocolate um, boys. Talk to me about the Hawks and Dees boys because I've I've spoken enough in the last few minutes. Yeah, nah, um, b- believe it or not, um, Dees are pretty good, man. Yeah, no, they're, they're very good. They're, they're not a bad squad, man. Um, like the usual usual suspects, man. Yeah. Oliver, Track, Gorn. Um, but the one thing that stood out to me, like particularly, right? Petrarca had five goal assists, right? Five goal assists, which is it doesn't seem like a huge number, but you know, what was the next highest? One. Exactly. One. So that dude just, he just he, puts he, it on a plate. He's, in, he's actually in career best form. Petrarca. He is, man. He is. Maybe it's, he's actually like a more dominant mid than Oliver is this year. I'd say so. He's, he's sort of, yeah, he's edging up there. Like, I think, um, maybe, does he become a Brownlow favorite at some point? If he keeps playing like this. If he keeps, know. you know, cooking on TikTok and then it's cooking in the game, true. he might as well. <laughs> he, he seems like such a great son and human. Like he, he he's, he's really yeah. making him sound like he's, he's putting himself out there as a really nice fella. We'll give him that. Did you guys see that video he did with Sushi Mango as well in the kitchen? Yeah. No. Yeah, it was no. funny. You should I'm watch it. I'm going to have to suss it out. Um, there we go. I'll say, well, maybe colliding. he's Mario. Petrarca. He's, oh, Petrarca he's is Mario. Petrarca, <laughs> he's, he's, he's set it up for him to be Mario. And that's it. Bont, and him and actually, Bont being Luigi, kind of, that works for me. Taranto <laughs> must be uh, Wario. <laughs> and some other that could be Prestia. <laughs> that could be Prestia. Yeah, yeah, maybe because he's meatball. He's meatball. Man. Um, and then all right, Taranto is Waluigi. I guess that that'll do for now. <laughs> we sorted it out. Anyone that didn't watch the previous podcast has no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I think it's pretty obvious. You know, watch the short at least. Yeah, watch the short and you know get back to us. <laughs> um, uh, with the oh, Hawks actually, yeah. you know, they're obviously a bottom team and a rebuilding team, but you could probably compare them a bit to North Melbourne um, in the rebuild, and I think they're fast tracked. Because even though they were smashed in the first quarter, this their second half was actually okay. You know, I mean, they still lost by a big margin, but they were miles behind, and they played some competitive footy second half and showed like showed something a bit of like you know, that's the type of thing that you're looking for as a, as a fan. Not expecting to beat Melbourne, but some nice ball movement. Some of their younger players like Seamus Mitchell, twenty seven possessions of half back. You know, that's the type of thing you look for. Well, they only got outscored by one goal in the second half. That's what I mean. Which, yeah. considering you've had such a bad start, it would have been easy to fold. Um, so I guess, yeah, credit to them for trying to still improve within the game and not just give up and go on to the next week. So I respect and, that. And the thing is, there's 
there's a thing to, you know, maybe teams put the foot off the gas, but I don't really think that's a thing. No, I don't think so. I think that if you're a team who's dominating the first half, you want to just pile it on for, um, for percentage. Because it's a big, it does make a big difference, you know, in the AFL. So, exactly you know, right. shout, shout out to Hawks for, for battling it out and keeping at it. That's it. Well done, Hawks. Now, George, <laughs> talk to me. It's your, it's your are we already up? Are we? Uh, or there was two Saturday night games. We can we can delay it slightly more Let's if you delay want. It, man. Right. Delay it. All right. We'll, we'll delay strictly it. follow the AFL yeah. ups order. Yeah. yeah. All right. So the Lions. Pretty much doubled the score of us at an 87 to 45. Um, mm. They're on a nice little win streak, the Lions, hitting form. The Bombers, I think the honeymoon's over. They yeah. played a pretty good game, Bombers. They're up at half time. Were they? Mm-hmm. Oh, I wasn't watching. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. It, was actually, it was actually. Oh, they were. It was yeah. Bombers versus Danaher. Yeah, it was, man. I was going to say it was Joe's day. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. Joe's day. He started the game, first two minutes with a screamer, and then he ends up kicking six and yeah. some like. He nice kicked goals. the first four goals for Brisbane. Mm. There's no one else. Yeah. The guy's actually, I mean, he's actually in Australian form. Mm. I want to say something about him because I'm going to formally give give him some flowers, right? And not just as a player, right? So as a player, obviously six goals, the scream are cool, right? But after every goal, I don't know if he does this every game, but he did it in this game. He doesn't celebrate like overly big against the Dons. Like it was like a subdued reaction every time. Like he would high five his teammates, but it was like, it was had parallels to like in soccer when was there some respect for his previous team exactly like because obviously Dana, the Danaher name is, is synonymous with Essendon mm. so he was just sort of he took it back he, you know he, you know when goals players kick a goal after the siren when the team's down by like 50 points and they're just like yeah you know what I mean or it's kind of like they have that they have that look in their face where it's like this, this sort of half smile that you give to colleagues that you don't like that oh, yeah the half smile you know <laughs> he kind of did that when he was scoring goals and it was like it was similar to soccer where they don't celebrate against their former team. I like that. It's so a nice sign of respect. Flowers not, to Danaher. I'm not flowers sure the Bombers Danaher. players would care that he's not celebrating kicking six on them. What but goal? Was, nice. what <laughs> Nonetheless, goal, it's nice. What goal was playing? Uh, sorry, what song was playing every time he kicked the goal? Was it still Frozen? Oh, I can't even remember, man. Yeah, probably, probably. He's got to change that. I man. think he's probably. stuck with that. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, though. Yeah, I did say before maybe the honeymoon's over for the Bombers. They've been a bit stiff the last four weeks. Four losses in a row. But the matchups have been very tough. Yeah, pies, cats, power, lions. That's right. That's pretty hard. They're, they're yeah, I think harsh, they're still harsh. fighting for like that eighth position, but they'll be around the eight to twelve mark. Yeah. But you know they they battle pretty hard, and you know Brisbane in Brisbane, you're not really going to beat them. Let's be honest. They're too good. Mm. So, I think if you're a fan, you're like, all right, you know they put in an effort. Yep. You can't expect to be beating them in Brisbane, not yeah, when they're enough. in this type of form. Yeah. No. The Brisbane, the Gabbers, you know, it's a it's a fortress. So yeah. I did want to give some flowers just once more in this game. Mm-hmm. Flowers to the Lions players for giving flowers after the game to mothers <laughs> in the crowd. That, so, was, that was nice. I did like Flowers that. for flowers there. There we go. Uh, <laughs> uh, George, we've delayed it long enough. I'm putting my phone down now. It's all on you now. Explain to me what is going on with the Blues. Nah, look. What do you guys think is going on first? Tell me, like, I, I want another person's perspective because I actually don't have any notes because I don't think Michael Voss has any notes either. <laughs> like, so I just thought, like, if he's not going to prepare for the game, I might as well not prepare I'll, for I'll the podcast. You, I'll tell you what I think at the moment, but I'll let Matt go first. No, I, I don't have much to say. I, I thought I'd leave this game to you, bro. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Straight up, I'm like, I'm not going to Me putting it to you has done nothing. I'll, yeah. I, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah, tell me. <laughs> and you seem to take this sort of stuff pretty well, the honesty well. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think the team has it, George. I don't think they have the mentality to be consistent enough to make finals. And even if you did finish eighth, you're getting bounced. Like, I just don't see how you can kick one goal in the first half of football that Eddie had. It's, you're not playing in the wet. There's no extraordinary circumstances. You're playing a team on your level, one goal in one half. That alone said it all. And then you've gone out and caught all the way back up, all the momentum on your side. You've got the lead with, what was it, nine minutes to go, ten minutes to go? I think it was six. Six minutes to go. You've got the lead (laughs) and then just they gave up. A few nice goals from the dogs. So some clutch finishes. Little Artie. Artie Artie, Jones. Artie Artie Jones. um, Libba scored a nice goal as well. Bailey Smith. But yeah, they just ran out of steam. Is that how you see it or are you very upset with your look, team? Look, man, I'm very upset. And you're right. Like, I'm not that reactive of a of a supporter. Like, when we're up and about, like, I'll go off at a game or something like that. But I recover pretty quickly. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the initial kind of excitement or, or anger. 
But at the moment, it's just kind of like, it's so disappointing. And a lot of Carlton fans are so deflated at the moment because just think about this, right? They're bad for so long, but last year it seemed for the first time that there was promise. And externally, a lot of people were like, oh, all right, Carlton actually might actually be a good team for once. Mm. They didn't make the finals, but everyone like everyone knows Carlton was good last year and played some strong football and beat some good teams or matched it with some good teams. Like lost to Collingwood, who nearly got into the grand final by one point. You know what I mean? Mm. Lost to... Um, and we're up by 23 points at three-quarter time. Lost to Melbourne in the last 10 seconds. Who like the, Beat Sydney. But like, that was like a strong team. A bit stiff, right? So you expect us to come out. Expect, expectations high this year. You expect us to make that next step finally. And they haven't just not done that. They've completely capitulated. And it's like it almost feels inevitable. Like this mm-hmm. team is just never going to do it. Yep. And that's kind of how it feels. Like think about like the roller coaster of emotions. And now suddenly it's come crashing down because they've lost to every team that's around them. Adelaide. Saints, Bulldogs, you know these are teams that mm. you've got to win some of them, man. But it's just not—it's not they're losing. They're playing a terrible brand of footy. Um, they're like they're for, like the, the skill errors are terrible. They can't kick a set shot. Uh, and yeah, it's just then they'll have that one good quarter that kind of makes the scoreboard look somewhat presentable, but doesn't tell the story. You know what I mean? So I don't know. There's there's not there's not the same man. But the funny thing is, like the such a big club, the pressure gets quick, like strong so quickly. The pressure, mm-hmm. Voss talks. You know, external rich people that support Carlton say they're never going to support him again. <laughs> you know what I mean, like it's mm-hmm. just it's just a club that can't escape the attention and can't perform under pressure. And like, what do you want me to say, man? It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. That's 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 it's hard, it's hard hearing. But then we're we're going through the same thing, man. Like this is but this the, is a bonding session for people the expectations who can't are not pick the a same. team. Expectations are not the same. North yeah. Melbourne can like they shouldn't suck this bad, but they they suck because they're rebuilding. That like who do they have in their team? Carlton is meant to be full of stars, man. Mm. Last year's Brownlee medalist, Sam Walsh, that's Young's generational superstar, yeah. two Coleman medalists. Like the list goes on. Like there's super draft picks everywhere. Like what are you doing, man? Kick the ball. Yeah. And this is the thing. <laughs> there it is. Kick the ball. This is the. Well, actually, <laughs> don't kick the ball because they kick it too much. Handball or do something else. But this is the other thing. We were playing so bad against against Bulldog. I didn't watch this game live, by the way. I just couldn't be stuffed. You know, <laughs> I watched it in pieces as we came by. We were, we were, yeah. we're not playing well. And if Harry had just kicked the normal thing, like Cripps snapped it on his left, Walsh kicked it out on the full. Like these are easy shots. If they just go through, we actually just win the game. Mm. We've got twenty nine inside fifties in the first half for one goal, as you mentioned before. The Bulldogs didn't put any scoreboard pressure on, and then when we came out and started playing some free flowing football, six goals in a row. Like they just they they made it impossible for themselves just to win a normal game. It's they, it's not that hard, man. <laughs> it's actually not that hard. Put me on the field, man. <laughs> Get him field. out there. How like what is happening to Harry Mackay? You tell me, man. Like, he must be under so much stress that his body just, like, forgets how to... He doesn't even make contact with the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if he just swings and misses next time. <laughs> Imagine the yeah. pressure every time that builds, that he's just like, oh, shit, I've gone for a mark and now I actually have to kick it. It's and the whole world watching him and, and waiting for him to fail. The whole world. The whole world. <laughs> those those Greeks in Europe. Carlton's yeah. not that big of a club. Anymore. Yeah, the whole world's watching Carlton <laughs> fail. That's how it feels. They're like the New York Yankees, man. They're huge. Yeah. Now we're going to verse Collingwood next week. Do you think I'm going to be watching that? No. I won't. Be. Uh, uh, the issue is as I, well, I will be, yeah. but... Yeah, I, I was going to say... I'm like, Whoa. Of everything you said then as well, it mm. was not beating teams that are around you on the ladder. That's the concerning thing because you think of your start to the season. You drew with the Tigers, okay. Two points, lost, whatever it is. It was the first game. Then you beat Geelong. Everyone's excited, reigning premiers. But as we came to see in the first month of footy, the Cats just weren't ready for the season. And since then, I dare say you wouldn't beat them if you played next week. Yeah, well, you get context as a season. Like North Melbourne won their you, first two games. Exactly. You know I mean? But then like, you, you go ahead and beat North as well. So that's 10 of your... 10 of your 18 points were done in the first couple of rounds. And mm. since then, it's just been very wishy We've beat West Coast. Yeah. So there you go. It's just not... Now we've got Collingwood, yeah. Sydney, Essendon. Good. Yeah. The, I, don't, I don't know if that's the order, but something like that. Well, maybe Essendon might be all right. Swans aren't doing that well. They're not beating Collingwood, though. Do you think you'll make the eight? No. No? Yeah, I I have to say, looking at the ladder now, the teams that are but around this is there the fighting thing, for like, it. There's no reason why Carlton doesn't make the eight. 
like like play. The reason wise. is themselves. It's physically, a, they should be better than they are, but yeah, mentally, I don't know. It's, it, I think it's exactly it's the mental thing. It's oh. like they think that every moment is the moment. I think they have to realize it's it's just footy. Just go out there, you know, execute your skills. Mm. I, I don't know. Like you were saying earlier, how oh, you know, this guy is he's you know he's taking a snap on his left. This guy's doing this. This guy's doing that. There just has to be some clarity and just be like, look, you know, I, we don't need to make every moment, you know, the, the fancy, you know, snap on the opposite foot and this and that. Just yeah, make it, yeah. keep it simple. And the mm. issue is as well. well it is, yeah, it is. Well, it is simple. Like the game is mm. actually simple. Win it. Yeah. Kick it forward. Provide a yeah. contest. Mm. It's all good and fun winning by 100 points. But then you back it up with two weeks in a row of just being not good enough against teams that are, in Brisbane's case, better than you, fair enough. But the dogs, that was there for the taking, man. It, it's not good enough. I don't think the dogs are that good, man. I, I just don't think they're, they're good, right? They're good. They're better than most teams, but they're not that good. They're not Collingwood's. Mm. They're not Melbourne's. Uh, we we should have won that game. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough, man. Yeah. All right. Thanks for sharing. And we'll put you out of your misery now. What, what do you, before we go? Like, like, what do you think of Voss? Like, I don't know, man. Uh, look, he's. They can't get rid of him, but I don't. I don't think he's he's the man. Well, I think he's had two years. I think two years of his team having a, being a good list and not being able to, you know. Get over that hump. I think that's is that not enough? Yeah, it's not good, man. Is that not enough? You know, time he, he to doesn't prove need yourself? to. He doesn't need to rebuild this team. No, this no. team is ready. Yeah, this team Take is. It. This is the team that he inherited from you know the previous you know from Teague. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I don't think I don't think he's uh, he's ready for it. If there's another option, if there's a more experienced option out there, as we've seen, you know, Essendon have played good footy with Scott. Uh, Saints have played better footy with with Ross. Maybe they got to look out for that. Mm. Guess we'll see. It's a big month of footy ahead for Carlton. Mm. The next game, though, the Crows, mate, their home form is really good. Yeah. They whacked the Saints. They did. Bit of a reality check for St. Kilda this mm. week. What was it? They, they copped 121 points. They couldn't absorb the, the pressure anymore. No. Yeah, it's the biggest loss Saints have had this year, but I think they haven't lost a game more than 10 points. Mm. Mm. They probably haven't copped the score higher than 100 this season, the way their defending's been going. But it's interesting. I did mention it last week that I don't think that they can be premiers. I did mention mm. it. I do feel there's one prediction that I feel a bit better about now. Um, yeah, you, you just you can't you can't let other teams dictate, you know, and play on their terms. You know, you have to be a bit more on the front foot, not just keep absorbing pressure and you know, and um, rebounding. Yeah. So the yeah. game got away from them very quickly. Six goals to one in mm. the first quarter. They just got jumped, similar to how the Crows jumped Carlton back at Adelaide Oval and even Collingwood. Um, yeah, once they get going at home, man, the forwards, Rankin, Tex. Tex just, five goals straight. Yeah, There's someone that can actually convert a set shot. Mm. Mm. It, helps, it helps when you can actually, you know, use your opportunities. So, they yeah, got, they're, they're pretty good, man. Like they have two of those. They've got him and Fogg. True. Both him and Fogg are, you know, good set shots. So, um, yeah, no, good on them. They're, Adelaide, uh, they've turned it around from, you know, the last couple of years of being, you know. Th- that's how you rebuild security. quickly, man. They've rebuilt mm. pretty quickly. Yeah. It's I can't even tell why I couldn't even tell you why I think Dawson's a big pickup. Yeah, he's huge. And you know they've got enough flair and skill. You know in you know the Rochelles and the Rankins, and even Tex as well. He's a skillful player for a big guy. Well, I'll tell you what, even just watching them play, I compare them say with North Melbourne a few years ago, both sort of rebuilding together. The North Melbourne bodies, we still look physically weak. Like there's very few built guys on our list. You look at Adelaide play now; mm-hmm. they're younger players have been hitting the gym and working harder, in my opinion, because they look physically ready and it shows. Um, mm. You're not able to dominate games without having that physicality to you as well, like skill and, and the physicality. So um, I think for them, the sky's the limit. Maybe not this year, but moving forward, why not? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, they're very good side. Very good side. Shout out to them. Um, and now St. Kilda, I don't know, like Max King might come back this week or the very likely will come really? back. Is he? Yeah, so maybe he Mem- can- Membry got concussed, didn't he? Yeah. He did. Well, there you go. There's your that in. That doesn't help. There's your out, and then, then there's your in. Um, hopefully, so maybe Max King. I was saying it last week. If he can kick straight, that might be their bailout option up forward that unlocks their attacking, you know, game a bit more because they'll just be a bit more. You have more faith in going forward and winning that midfield battle yeah. when you got a forward like that. So and they've got good players to play at his feet: Higgins, Butler, yeah, uh, Philippu. Yeah. There's a few of them there now that. Mm. can really feed off the ball that hits the ground. They started strong last year, the Saints. Mm. I think people forget that. I think they were like 8-2, and two, something like that. They started strong this year. Now they've kind of plateaued a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how they end up finishing. 
True. True. I didn't think of that. They were really good at the start of last year. So maybe maybe this is the recurring thing for the Saints. Maybe they're back to reality and they're going to, you know, hang out at the bottom of the ladder with us. You know, I don't know. George is eyeing off their spot in the eight, maybe. <laughs> that, must be, Carlton, that must be what it is. Carlton has he's, no... He's trying to find an avenue to the eight Carlton, for, yeah. the, for maybe, the blue baggers. Maybe like, I don't know, Petrarca, Oliver, Gorn, Fritsch all just get, you know... Injured, I don't know. How <laughs> many put Fritch in that in that bracket? Fritch is good. That's, man. that's a that's a lot of respect for Fritch. I would have gone May or Lever before that. Fritch is good, bro. Fritch is good, but like, right. is Fritch is good? Is is <laughs> It's a stretch, but all right, oh, cool. <laughs> you don't think yeah. Fritch is like a top ten player for them? Yeah, top ten. But you're going like, five? yeah, but like, yeah, I reckon you said him about two or three names a bit early, maybe four <laughs> or five names early. So I reckon maybe two names early, Fritch. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I reckon four or five. Anyway, split the difference. Yeah, anyway, I think <laughs> <laughs> we we move on to the next yeah, one. What do you guys think? <laughs> is Bailey Fritch in Melbourne's top five players? Man, Fritch is a great player. He's not top five. <laughs> He's not top five, bro. <laughs> let's go. All right, now let's go. All right, Oliver Track Gorn. I'm still gonna go with Grundy over Fritcher. Right. Yeah, yeah. I still think he's a better player. I think Gr- and then Fritcher. Fine. Viney. No, Lever May Viney, May Viney. <laughs> Nah, Fritch is better than Viney. <laughs> no, no way. No, nah. he's not. But who's good in their forward line other than Fritch? Nah, Ben Brown. Nah, he's not very ben good. Brown. But Viney's. Uh, but Fritch is their best forward. Cosy's no. Cosy's better than Fritch as well. I'm, I'm taking Cosy over Fritch any day. Cosy's number one, bro. Yeah, he's number. He's number one in in the league. But like, <laughs> let's so just say we just got really upset at George for saying his name two names early. <laughs> no, I'm I'm upset, man. I'm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm quitting. Right. I'm quitting the five. <laughs> Seven of the right is not that bad, is it? No, oh, that's yeah. all right. Let's let's Next move, time say let's move on before I yeah. punch Georgie. Yeah. Next time, say Cosy pick it first. <laughs> hey, don't let him punch me. But if, if you do, get it on camera. Right, Dan's gonna have to be in the middle next spot, oh, no, man. That's it. We'll change up. Um, oh, look, there was one more game to if talk Bailey about. If Bailey Fridge got punched, do you think he's, do you think his hair would stay <laughs> as it is? Uh, uh, yes, hundred percent. I think it would stand up probably. more. You know, yeah, it, it would be just you no. Know, it would be, but it, <laughs> thing is, his hair comes back down. If you got punched, it just have like you ever seen Bailey Fritz go off with the blood rule? Have you? No, no, no you no. haven't. Why is that? I don't know. What? Why'd you mention that? You could have said any player. No, what I'm saying. Bailey have Fritz, you seen freaking Michael Hibbert go off with the blood? Rule? Michael Hibbert. I've never seen him play footy. Is he? He's, is he? <laughs> is that the guy's name? Mitch. Nah, isn't that? Isn't that Michael? Well, that might have been an old dude. Michael and Mitchell. Michael, Michael and Mitchell. Hibbert? Michael and Mitchell is the same thing, anyway. Let's be ba- fair. Bailey Fritz has never gone off with the blood rule. <laughs> oh, I bet you that's like. <laughs> Hey, hey that, that pushes him into the top five. I just thought that was interesting. He's too clean cut. The, okay, that was where you're getting at. Okay, he's yeah, well, cut. we're talking about punching and then we're talking about Fritz being the best player in the AFL. So, so did, how did you come up? <laughs> We've gone off on a massive tangent about Bailey Fritz. <laughs> Actually, funny story about Bailey Fritz. Here what? we go. I'm not going to say... Let's, since we're on the topic of Bailey Fritz. I'm not going to say where I worked. Just keep that personal. But mm. his grandmother was a client of I mine. I thought it was father. They were both there, grandmother, grand. I can't oh, remember okay. who was the client, one of them, but his grandparents were there. Oh. And they mm-hmm. had signed photos of him in their purse. It was very cute. Ah, it's cute. Uh, nice. They didn't give me one because I didn't say I was a demon supporter. You know why, ah. their, ears, you know why their ears are messed up? Because Bailey Fritch kissed too many goals and the crowd is too loud. That's why. <laughs> that must be him. <laughs> that is no. it. That is it. Oh. All right. Can we move on now? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. So the thing with Bailey Fritch is. Um, oh. All right. The Pies beat the Giants. Yeah. It was very convincing. The pies are very good. They're very good. I can't believe they won by sixty-five, man, against G Dub. Like, I'm not too surprised, to be honest. At th- home. Neither am I. <laughs> nah, fair enough. I thought G Dub were better than that, man. Nah, G Dub suck, bro. They're fourth last. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Oh, I don't know what I'm, what footy I've been watching then. Maybe it's because I've been seeing like no, because they're good, good players. That's why. True, true. They're like Carlton, good players, bad team. That's right. Um, yeah. The, I think the highlight of the game happened in the first like minute. Bobby Hill's goal. You Which said, one was that? That, like, he... So, he was sort of looking... He looked inboard. He's in the pocket. He looks inboard. But then, like, there was no option. So, he was just like, you know what? I'm going to do a little cheeky dribbler. And there was no one on the goal line. And it just snuck in. Nice. It's beautiful. Beautiful stuff. That was the moment of the game. The rest of it, you know, Dacos had a bad tagger on him. So, he could have a... So, <laughs> yeah, he had a good 41. Game. Yeah. If he doesn't get tagged, 40 possessions. No. Nah, he got... What was it? He got... I feel like he's going to get tagged every game now for the rest of the year. Mm-hmm. But now it's just like, who's a good tagger? You're right. If You're right. right. Halloran or Halloran's not. Who's he? He's not a tagger. I don't even know who that is, man. Xavier or Hiram. You know. He's actually, I think he's an all right player. And you know what's cool about him? He's, his initials are XO. You know, X's and O's. You know what I mean? I think that's pretty cool. 
I just wasn't giving X's and O's to Doka. <laughs> no, he <it> wasn't. No. <laughs> no. You guys don't think that's mad, but... X no, it, it is cool. Yeah, because there's no reaction. It was just quiet, man. Like, give me some feedback. You think he signs something. cards like that? <laughs> What's that? He, he signs, signs off on like yeah. birthday cards like yeah. that. Yeah, from XO, and he, at the bottom XOXO. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to get better at footballs so that he can sign more of those. My question yeah, is, true, though, true. Does he does he put in the big kiss, big hug? <laughs> big uh, Nacho Libre shout out. That's it. Kiss, kiss, little kiss. That's <laughs> I love that movie, man. Uh, uh, well, speaking of the pies, actually, just one more thing. Yeah, Mason Cox. This guy hey. here, he doesn't play well every week. We know this. But when he does... Yeah, when he does, he's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a superstar of the Australian 19 touches, game. nine marks, 24 hit outs, two goals. I'll tell you what. What a I, nuisance. I'm going to give you a prediction, right? What's that? Collingwood's going to win the flag. Okay. And Mason Cox is going to be the best player. Best on ground? Yes. Norm Smith? I think so. That's such a random call. No, but I just I just see it. Not you know? us. And Mason it's going to be so insulting to whoever else is playing him because they're like, oh, we didn't just lose a call. We lost to Mason Cox. <laughs> and then they're going to make a documentary about him. And then all of America is going to get onto AFL and it'll end up being a good thing, but it'll take a while for us to yeah. register that. Yeah, true, true. Actually, that's my I like prediction. That. I like that prediction. Don't you just think that's going to happen? Yeah, but it could be one of those things. Remember with Tom Boyd, you know, when he kicked the goal from the center square and mm. he should have won. He should have yeah. won it, but he didn't. Yeah. They don't give it to big men, man. They don't like Ruckman. That's a good That's yeah. a good shout out. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's, you know, I think that, that's probably what will happen. Um, yeah. Was it JJ won it that year? Was it JJ? Yeah, JJ. Yeah. yeah JJ had player. a good game, but... Very wasteful with possession. Yeah, and, and Tom Boyd, you know, like he kicked the goal. And then retired. Him inside the Scanner Square, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you know, you know. Yeah, if, if you know, you know. Yeah, one, one of the best commentary moments on 3A, whatever it was, 3 I think. Um, Did you guys see Bo McCurry's mum? Like, yes. Yeah, I saw that, she man. That was, like she was Braveheart or something like that. I know. That was, I like that, man. I like that. And, and it's cool that all the players knew who she was when yeah. she entered. You know what I mean? It wasn't just like... Oh, who's this random mum here? Yeah. You know, that you was know what's funny about it is like she started off mm. and then like the boys got louder and louder as it went on <laughs> as, as if like it actually started to motivate them. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. It did. It did, man. Otherwise, they wouldn't have won. CWS need Bo McCurry's mum. <laughs> That's it. Well, when you race Bo, when we get 100 subs, we'll ask him. Yeah, yeah we'll, get the, we'll get the mum to officiate the race. Mate, yeah. he, he's going to need all the motivation he can get from his mum to beat you in a race, That's man. It, let's man. let's keep let's keep it fair, man. No, my hammy, my hammy's tight, everyone, by the way. My hammy's too tight to race. Uh, so. uh, if anyone knows how to fix yeah, t- tight hammies, any, let us know. Any hammy fixes, <laughs> <laughs> let me know. I will let him know. Um, um, I did just want to say one more thing about the pies in general. Yeah. So I'm watching them play and you're thinking every week, I'm thinking to myself, how do they do it? Like, I know I've mentioned it before, but their midfield has such a great balance. Like you look at the different types of players that are in that midfield. Crisp, he's got the engine to keep going and like be part of all the handball chains. Mm. Dacos, silky skillful, same as Josh Dacos. Side bottom, he knows when to be outside. He's sort of really smart, hits the right targets. Pendlebury, inside out. Um, Tom Mitchell now they've got in there, the on-ball specialist. Like everything you need in a midfield, they can mix and match and just form... So many different midfield combos that just work perfectly every time. Yeah, and there's other players they can go through, like Jamie Alley can go through. I know. Uh, Dugowie, I didn't even mention. Dugowie is probably the best. Mm. So they've, you know, where teams would have maybe one or two types of those players or maybe one player that's inside and out, these guys, they're all inside, they're all out. They they can do it all. So it's no surprise that they're clear first actually at the moment as well. So, um, yeah, well done to the Pies. We're all envious, I think. Mm. Whether we like it or not, we all enjoy watching them. Yeah, um, that's true. So let's see who can take him down. Is it going to be Carlton? We'll go through our tips now. Mm. Um, actually, let's review our tips really quickly. So we got the Pies game right. Yeah. Crows, right? Yeah, Crows. I think yeah. yeah, you guys. I think we've t- tipped Lions, the Crows right? every every game. They this deserve year. it, mate. Yeah, yeah, fair, fair enough, man. Good team. Uh, so Pies, Crows, Lions. It's three. Blues, Dogs. Did we go? Do you remember? We went Carlton. We went Carlton. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, that was because so of, of you guys. One, two, three. Three <laughs> Hawks, we got obviously that one right hmm. with the D's winning. I think we did pretty well. We only got three wrong. Okay, six out of nine. Yeah, nice, nice boys. We'll, we'll be, we might, we may be corrected. It feels like we got there was something wrong there, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, um, the <laughs> yeah. editing will, will uh, reconcile. We'll, yeah. Yeah. If I'm the, wrong, it's on the screen. So yeah, that's, that's it. The, the editing will uh, will <laughs> reveal all. Um, yeah, actually, you know, before we go into tips, I saw this little thing. Yeah. It was it was it was on it was from NBA retweet on Twitter, and it's it's even though it's an NBA thing, it's questions that we can just directly you know steal and put it in an AFL context. So, favorite player of all time, Brent Harvey. 
hard for me to go against that as well. I'm going to go Brent as well. Man, I have no idea. I would have thought it would be a certain number five. No, nah, it's not. It's not Judd. It's not Juddy. It's not Judd. Look, right. I've always loved Judd, but I've never. It's never really been my my guy. For, wow. So yeah, I reckon. Yeah, just the quick, quick off the look. It's hard for me. Look, it's going to be weird. But my favorite player. Can I have a guess? Walsh. Can I have a guess of who it is? Is no. it a Carlton player? Uh, no. Oh, I was oh, going to say wow. Favola, surely. Favola was one of them. Yeah, yeah, it had to be. Look, I think yeah. I think probably if I, it's hard. I think, man, look, you're going red, man. He's, he's struggling <laughs> here, man. <laughs> Div, what are we going to we're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> My favorite player f- for a long time in my teens was actually Scott Pendlebury. Oh, I could see why your face is going red. <laughs> no, no, I was not for that. I'm just, yeah. yeah. Wow. But I think Eddie Betts is probably my favorite player. All right, cool. Oh, that's, okay. that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a more but appropriate had, Carlton I kind answer. Of had, my favorite players have always been ones that, that I loved in Supercoach. Like one of my I, favorite I players that, of all times you. is Aaron Sanderlands. <laughs> <laughs> because that guy, I just, he just performs week in, week out. <laughs> Sandilands, man. In the same pod, we've had Mason Cox, Norm Smith. <laughs> <laughs> Sandyland's favorite player ever. Bro, Sandyland, Sandy Pants, man. That guy was the oh, best. Man. I don't so, even. Have to, I don't even. I'm not even gonna go through the rest of this. No, but what I'm that. saying is, it's not just that. It's not, they don't have to be like the Judd, man. Their favorite players are like the quirky ones. Sandyland, Betts because he's the goat. Yeah, Pendlebury yeah. because he just was Dying. in his early years. So Pendlebury was so good, man. <laughs> Gary oh, Ablett. All right. Oh, uh, oh, actually, I know, and I've got a couple more. Oh, okay. Corey Enright. <laughs> Corey, do you know why, why is Corey Enright? Corey Enright is one of the greatest halfbacks. I love, of all time. No, I love it. He's the most underrated player of all time. Bro, Corey Enright is but the say goat. He's your favorite. He's so funny, bro. I love Corey Enright, man. I love him too. Man. <laughs> what, what's wrong, Sandilands, man? <laughs> Sandilands was Freer's best player other than Pavlich, like ever. Oh, jeez. Uh, other than five. I was going to say they had a Brownlow medalist, man. A dual Brownlow yeah, medalist. I didn't think I'd ever laugh this hard on the pod. Thanks, George. Oh, thank you. What no, thanks, you know, guys don't think Sandilands is the goat? Come on, bro. Settle down. It's more so like the Cox Norm Smith shout. <laughs> Co- Cox That's is going to win the Norm Smith. I, I promise you. I let that one slide, but then you've just gone two big men in one pod. Uh, uh, George oh, just man. loves the Ruckman, man. He does, man. He does. Low key, he's a Ruckman. Who guy. else I like? Uh, that, let's, this was, the next question was player I dislike. Any small guy. Oh, Milne. Milne. Steve Milne. Steve Milne. <laughs> small guy. There you go. There you go. He <laughs> went straight for this ball. Oh, oh, actually, oh. I've got one. Who was the, the Muppet that played for, for uh, Lindsay, <laughs> Lindsay Thomas, man? All right. <laughs> Lindsay <laughs> Thomas. I did yeah, not like him. Fair a, enough. No, no one did. Yeah. No one did. Um, oh, I'm trying to think who I, didn't, who I don't like. Two small boys. Most disliked player. Disliked player. Oh, let's just, we'll try and make it quick. I'm going to go with Horn Francis. Done. Yeah, it's got to be him, right? Yeah, right no now. Dino and I, we're, we're, we're copying from each other's uh, you know, tests. Yeah, uh, no, next I, one. No one else annoys me that much. Yeah, yeah. player that grew on me. Belly fridge. Belly fridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Cal Wilkie. Maybe you know, he's, he's sort of as he's you know sort of developed, he's become a really nice mm-hmm. player. We'll go with Cal Wilkie. Player that grew on you, Dino. Player that grew on me. I'm thinking one of the mm. Hawthorne players from their dynasty. So maybe someone like a Sam Mitchell. Oh yeah. In the beginning, never really thought much of him, but. The more I watched him, the more I thought, man, this guy's just a wizard with the ball. Mm. Yeah, no, fair enough. Fair enough. Here's, here's another one. Most overrated player. Ooh. Like currently? Yeah, well, whatever. Whatever your thoughts is. Currently, previous. Like, I think the, the quick one for me is Bailey Smith. Because even though he's a great player, he's a bit he's talked about because of his hair, because, you know, whatever. He's he's a bit of a showboat. But a lot of times I feel like he just gets the ball, runs and smacks it on the boot and doesn't have much direction. But he's a good player. I reckon Isaac Heaney. Oh, mm. you know everyone's like That's Isaac, Isaac Heaney, man, top twenty player in the AFL. Bro, you're not. You, the thing is, he's you're not though. The thing is, we all, uh, my thought with him is always like, if he played in the midfield, he'd be one of the best midfielders in the game. No, but he played, but he just doesn't. He's never done it. But you know, he so was, how can we prove it? Well, he was all Australian last year, wasn't he? Good question. I don't know. So he had a good. Yeah, like I had him in Supercoach last year. He played well, but I, I think he's overrated, man. No, oh, fair enough. Well, I like it though. Good call, Dino. Overrated. I don't know. I'm trying yeah. to think of guys that are rated and see if I yeah, disagree. Right. So, I don't know. Is it one of the Carlton the Carlton boys? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe like a... I don't know. He's... Get, just, just give us I, a I don't want to say because I don't no. agree with it. He's no. like... He's a... Paddy Cripps a bit overrated. Cripps oh. can't be overrated, man. He won the oh. Brownlow last year. He was a, a god overrated. I'm not saying I agree. I'm just saying. Maybe. No, I don't, I don't mind Look, it, Dana. the thing about it... I like if, it. Let's say if Let's say Cripps doesn't have a great year this year. Then you would say that he's overrated, but that's because he was the number one player last year. Mm. 
All right. There's a better answer out there, but I can't think of one. Yeah, so yeah. These, look, these are unprepared questions. I just sprung them on the boys because I thought it'd be fun. Um, the next one, most underrated player. Surely, it's it's. There must underrated. be someone who you're thinking. You know, he needs he needs a bit more flowers than what he gets. Hmm. Um, have you got one? Okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm hoping that you guys would have some. Um, if I'm gonna go, let's 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 go into the uh, memory bank of under underrated. Players, I'm you know I'm gonna go from an old one. I'm gonna go Jess Sinclair from North Melbourne. Oh wow, that's a throw. Just, he's, yeah, it's because no one knows him, but I'm, I used to like him as a kid. He was so part gonna, of some decent North teams back in the day. Yeah, that's it. So we're Who gonna go with that. I don't huh? know. He's a half Jesse, back. Yeah, he he was he was a good player, man. Jess Sinclair. We're going with Jess Sinclair for some reason. Underrated. It's probably hmm. probably some guy on a team that. Sort of like a Frio, like a Sarong, maybe something like that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Right, fair. Those teams who don't get as much love as yeah. you like know. No one in Victoria is talking about Caleb Sarong when we probably should. No, he's yeah. a great player. Yeah, he, he he needs some more flowers. Uh, next, the other one is you got nothing there. You got nothing. Yeah, yeah. I reckon Lee is Lee, I reckon Liam Baker's a bit underrated. I just yeah, think he's very good. Yeah, no, I like and the that. other one good from call. Collingwood that like I think Collingwood fans rate him really highly, but like John Noble, no one talks about this guy. Man, he's mm. solid. He used to be a bit of a whipping boy, but now this year he's been even better. He's always improving. Yeah, I haven't seen him made a, make a mistake in ages. I like those calls, boys. And the next one, the goat. The goat? Ablett. Ablett? Yeah. I'm thinking if you put player and coach as a thing, Lee Matthews. Well, I never... The thing about Lee Matthews, is a lot of people say he's one of the greatest or the greatest, but mm. never watched him play. I don't know anything about the guy. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I think it's it's something you've got to delve into. Like, who is the actual GOAT? Who's because the best in, of our generation? Yeah. Of our generation? Oh, for me, it's Ablett. Gary Ablett. For Has me, it's be, Ablett right? Jr. Has like, because be. it's a very highly... Like, it's an easy topic in the NBA because it's LeBron or Michael Jordan, straight up. But in the AFL, it, it doesn't really get talked about. Who is the GOAT? Who is the best player who's ever played our sport? Dusty it, goes in there. He's in the question for me because you look at his accomplishments. It's it stacks up with the best premierships, multiple Norm Smiths. I never liked like the accomplishments part. Like, oh, he won. He's the captain of the of the premiership team as accomplishment. I don't, I don't think that makes like I don't think that if we're talking about the player in his individual skill. Let's say Judd played in Carlton his whole career, never had any success. Is he still one of the greatest midfielders we've seen? Still is, right? Irrespective of whether he won flags or stuff. I don't like when mm. they, they say, oh, he's the best because he was a Norm Smith back to back to back. Well, Dusty, we shouldn't have had all those Norm Smith. Let's let's put that out there. No, well. Bashar Huli robbed. But yeah, true. No, um, that's a fair call. But no, he's obviously a freak. I think what you'll find, you can think of so many names. Like even mm. guys like Dane Swan don't get remembered as well as they should, but he was an absolute freak at the top of his game. Yeah. Fife, top of his game freak. Dusty. But I think Gary Ablett was just... Too consistent. Too right? good for yeah. too long. Yeah. Like, I think we all got to do our own little bit of research. Figure out how do you, how do you like define the goat in our sport? How do you define it? Is it the peak? Is it this this dude had like a peak of like ten years? Or I think it you know has what to I mean? be like Dangerfield's had eight All Australians. Gary Ablett didn't even have eight All Australians. Really? Didn't he? I don't think so. As in junior or senior? Uh, junior. Australian list I'm sure. I'm sure there's players like junior has more than ten. That doesn't mean much. Nah, to me, there's no way he has more than ten. I reckon he does, bro. Lukin's got 10 All-Australians. I reckon he's got 10, bro. I'll look it up right now. Keep talking. Yeah, look no, it up, bro. No, legit. Because 10 All-Australians, that means you've played, say, from the age of 22 to 32, you've had one every year. And Gaza, I feel like Gaza was good into his mid to late 30s. He was. He was. Well, like, obviously, he got injuries towards the end, but he was still probably getting I reckon Brownlow votes has to 34. come into it. Like, you got to look at total Brownlow votes. Yeah, that's fair enough. But I think... all. The, yeah, I don't know. It's a tough one, man. I, I do want to do a little eight bit of time. It. Sorry, boys. Eight for all Australians. Eight. eight it's the same time. as Dangerfield. Oh, same as Dangerfield. There you go. But um, like Judd, what is how many all Australians has Pendlebury got? P- Pendlebury must have a few, man, because he's, he's been, been like five or six. Yeah, what is he like forty nine now? Like he must have yeah, at least twenty five all Australians. Yeah, he's he's going hard, man. <laughs> Give he doesn't us, he doesn't look forty nine? No, he's, he's looking he's looking good, man. He's uh he's age he looks the same. I think the as conversation it. about the goats, though, in my opinion, it's mm. all on opinion as well. Like you mentioned yeah. before, Jordan and LeBron. There's Kobe guys out there. Yeah, but if you had to objectify it, I, I don't know think you can. I don't think you can, man. Mm. Especially in footy, this, the eras have changed. The game has changed so much in five you, years. You got to talk about it in within the the context yeah. of the era. You have to. Like, I think you can't the compare. era you can do, but yeah. not mm. all time. Fair it's enough. Too hard. Fair um, enough. Six time Penelope, all Australia. Oh, that's that seems a bit low. Seems a bit low. Is, yeah. 
he ain't the goat, I guess. Um, but actually, he might he might even be the goat. He's, he's probably he's the goat. Of, is it a goat of Collingwood? Oh, I hard to, to say because then you go back all those years, like this seventy year old dude won five yeah. premierships on his own. You know what I mean? There's there's those type of players. No, that's the same. Whenever you know? they talk about like plays in the eighties, man, this guy kicks like six hundred goals in one season. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's it. Who is this player? That's it. They talked about <laughs> a dude, a uh, uh, Saint Kilda player. I can't even remember his name. Shows how irrelevant it is these days. He scored hundred goals in a year for the Saints or some, and it's like I don't even. I've never heard this name before. That's right. You know some. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it was on the broadcast. I can't remember. Stuart Lowe. Was that Stuart Lowe? Stuart, maybe it was, it was maybe it was him, bro. I don't know who that is, bro. <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, enough. okay. Anyway, I reckon we move on to the tips because we've probably blown out the pod to like what? No, that's all right. We'll be quick with this. So, yeah. Port the Friday night game very interesting. Port hosting the D's top four clash. Yeah, it's a good game, isn't it? Very good game. Who do you think is going to win, George? I'm going to go D's. Uh, the away team. Yeah. Oh, that's that's odd for odd for. You know, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go D's as well, but I that's think the lot stronger. Georgie. I think they're stronger. You know, I'm not tipping Port, so it's yeah, I think all the way. was it um, Bryn Teek? The, is he the Ruckman? He's gonna get destroyed. Teek. He's gonna get destroyed by Gorney. Yeah, um, Track's enough. gonna monster Horn Francis. You know, it's gonna be good. <laughs> yeah. um, I hope so. Next game, North v the Swans. I'll be at this game, so North, please, not a hundred point loss. Come on, give me something to watch. They're playing Marvel. It yeah. is a Marvel. S- Sydney can't lose. They can't, they shouldn't lose. No, I don't think they can lose. Like as harsh as it as it is to say, I'm we're, not tipping we're north. No way. Yeah, we're bad. We're bad. So pretty easy, easy. The tip whole there. fun of tipping north every week's over. Long gone. I oh, know that that was great. The first three weeks of the pod, where we'd be like, I got a feeling about North Melbourne, but that that died very quickly. <laughs> That's dead. We're, yeah, he's dead. He's dead. <laughs> Maybe in the next like two three years, eventually we'll get there again. But yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, so a couple of unanimous tips there. Now we've got dogs hosting the crows at Mars Stadium. Is that in um? Is that in like Darwin Mars. or something? Mars. It's, it's, it's in Mars. Where's that? So, it's, uh, it's, it's another country. Yeah, it's another, another, it's another, another planet, planet, sorry. Yeah. Another planet. Oh, it's no. in Mars, yeah. You've got to factor in the gravity as well. No, legit. Is that <laughs> in a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to search it up because I'm, I'm lost as well. Mar- it's, it's not... Um, Is that Darwin? It's, it's one of those places with like no fence. Again, Mars. Yeah, okay. Bulldogs play in those places all the time. They love Ballarat. It, right? oh, it's Ballarat. Ballarat. Mars Stadium, Ballarat. Yeah, Ballarat doesn't have a fence. Wenduri, Victoria. Wenduri, is that Ballarat? So do we think... Must be. Do we think the dogs can do it? The crows are pretty good this year. I'm happy to tip dogs. Yeah. If it was crows at home, I'd tip them easily, but... I'm going to go crows. Um, I'll go crows too, but I'm not confident. Yeah. This is the first time I've gone against the crows. Mm. Yeah, shame on you, man. Yeah, I know, man. How do you feel? <laughs> we still tip them anyway, right? Yeah, true, true. <laughs> nah, the overall tip is there. Next game. Next game Frio. is Frio hosting the Cats Ooh. at Optus Stadium. Cats for me. Yeah. Ooh, he says it. Yeah, I'm gonna go Freo, man. Hey, Ooh. only because the cats still have injuries, and uh, you know that's back in the boys. Mm. Back in the boys. It's you know what? The They've hit some form, so maybe I shouldn't have dismissed them so quickly. But mm. who, did, who does Geelong even have in the midfield, man? Um, I know we talked about it last week, but who are the midfielders? Man? Holmes and Atkins. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Household names, man. You reckon Darcy, mm. Sarong, Brayshaw are gonna get on top? Yeah, I like it. Fair enough. Am I? Yeah, fair enough. Hey, Segler is he's good. Segler. Segler? Yeah. Segler, did Segler didn't even play. I oh, know he, he did. He, he did. plays. He plays. Reeves was. Mm. Who does Reeves play for? Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to have to do a who he play for. <laughs> who he play for <laughs> <laughs> on Georgie. He's struggling right now. So, so yeah, anyway, we all have um, our moments of struggle. So I've gone Geelong, so. Frio. Matt, so you're the decider here. Frio, Geelong, yeah. I think I said Geelong. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. If I, I didn't, I'm going with Geelong. Sorry. I'm going with the Cats. <laughs> All right, Geelong then. Uh, Brisbane hosting the Suns. We've got a Queensland derby here. Hey, Brizzy. Every time Brizzy smacks him up, can the Suns finally do it? Nah. <laughs> no? <laughs> nah, Brizzy. I'm waiting for the no gnaw ch- of the no week. Chance. Not yet? Okay. Mm. Uh, that is a gnaw though. That is a 100% a gnaw. Which one? Brisbane at home. But it's go. I'm not, that's not going to be my gnaw. Oh, I'm waiting. I don't know which one it's going to be. I'm looking ahead. Let's, yeah. let's continue. Bombers hosting the Tigers. Dream time at the G. No way. No, he's no, not knowing this. No way. No, no, not this one. Not he's this gonna one. make it the oh. blues. No, no. Wait, which game are we talk? Which one? Which game are we up to? There's so not many games. Bombers, left. Bombers, Richmond. Oh, Bombers, Richmond. Yeah, no. Nah, so for that game, uh, I'm gonna go with. Uh, I'm gonna go with Tigers. Bombers. Oh, you're leaving it to me. Okay. Yep. Now I need to think. Bombers so, have lost a lot of games in a row. Time for them to win. So you think it's time for them to win? And Tigers, they've just had a nice couple wins. 
You know what? I'll go Bombers. I agree. Fair enough. I think they'll bounce back. All right. Mm. Okay. Hawks hosting the Eagles in Launceston. Hawks. Hawks. Have yeah. Yeah. No, nah, I'm, I'm going with Hawks as well. Yeah. Hawks in Launceston. Especially in, in Launceston. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna touch them up. Oh no! Is, is this the <laughs> ask Carlton me. hosting uh, gets the Pies? Ask me. Ask me. Matza, <laughs> can Carlton beat the Pies at the G on Sunday at three twenty p.m.? Just what's the forecast? <laughs> the three letters N A W. Now Carlton's been given the first now. They're three. gonna get the now because the they're versing the Pies and they're a team who's clutch. And Carlton are not clutch. How does that make you feel, George? You've Look, been gnawed. It's a ridiculous call to call it the nah of the week, man. Wow. This is meant to be the this is the nah. This is not a nah. Nah, no. Nah, I'm I'm getting. I want to get more daring with my nahs, man. Even though I stuffed it up last week, I'm I'm not I'm not stu- I'm not mucking around, man. Look, I Collingwood, I think will win, but they won't win by a lot. It will be a close game. I hope it is because it will make a very exciting game. But mm. I see Collingwood winning this by six goals. Yeah, no, nah, I, I think. I, yeah, no, I think. I think. Collingwood is going to be the last nail in the Collingwood Carlton by, coffin by, by twelve points. Collingwood by twelve. Yeah. All right. There we go. All right. I hope so. Last game, GWS hosting the Saints. That's a tough one, man. To be honest with you, because St Kilda just got touched up away. Still going to go with them. I'll back them to bounce back. Mm. I have no idea. I don't, how about this? How about this? I don't, He's just bewildered by my no. I don't care who no, wins that game. How about that? that fair, hey, fair, fair. fair That's the most irrelevant fair. game in history, that one. No, understandable. I feel like GWS are a part of a lot of those. Yeah. And even St. Kilda as well. You know? Well, St. Kilda are relevant <laughs> this year, but they're that. We'll see what happens at the end of the season. Mm. Yeah, it's hard to get into the games when the crowd sort of. Come on, that's not a game yeah. you're watching. Yeah. Mm. It's hard. Anyway, yeah. thanks very much, everyone, for bearing with us during the laughing fits and yeah. a few jokes today. We found out that George really has a thing for the very tall Rockman. <laughs> <laughs> very tall Rockman. I actually don't like Mason Cox, by the way. <laughs> Aaron Sandilands, no. though. My guy. Your Sandy. Guy. My guy. That's our guy. Friend my of the guy. pod. That's I'm pretty it. sure he does landscaping yeah. out in Perth. Anyone needs landscaping services? There you go. Yeah. Go to Aaron Sandilands. Shouting out, shouting out his business. Yeah. We're not sponsored, but... you know, We could Come be on. sponsored by Sandilands... Uh, Gardens. That's it, man. Promo Sandy. code AFL Enjoyers on Sandalwood's website. <laughs> 20% off your landscaping. <laughs> <laughs> all good. Um, yeah, all the socials on the screen. Thanks again, everyone. We'll catch you on the next one. Ah, see, see you guys. guys.